here we are. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Um, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Akira class. Uh, major apologies for the delay. Um, just a minor technical issue with the microphones, believe it or not, which, where does, a, you know, the 3.5 millimeter a cable go? Uh, sometimes there are way too many ports. The more ports, the more problems but uh, that doesn't matter now because we're here and we're going to go into a new section a new chapter on our aqidah class specifically the one titled faslun fi tariqati ahli sunnati al amaliyah so now we're going to speak about the practical methodology of ahli sunnah wal jama'ah qawluhu thumma min tariqati ahli sunnati wal jama'ati ittiba'i athara rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama batinan wa zahira and from the way of the people of the sunnah and the jama'ah is the is them following any traces anything traceable to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam both internally and externally both internally and externally the Sheikh Rahimullah says in the, in the commentary on Ibn Taymiyyah's statement, which we just cited, لما فرغ المؤلف مما يريد ذكره من طريقة أهل السنة العقدية شرع في ذكر طريقتهم العملية. Uh -huh. After the author concluded uh, mentioning the creedal position or creedal methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he initiated and began discussing now the practical methodology of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah qawlu ittiba'u al athar la ittiba'a illa bi ilm regarding following the, that which is traceable to the prophet sallam of course that is fundamentally the narrations that doesn't happen except with knowledge idhan fahim fahima uh, fahima harisuna ala talab al ilm lahza لا اتباع إلا بعلم إذن فهم حريصون على طلب العلم. so then the, those people, سبحان الله, those people that are keen on following the narrations of the Prophet Sallam know that it cannot be done without the acquisition of knowledge, and therefore they are keen on acquiring knowledge. they are keen on acquiring knowledge. لِيَعْرِفُوا آثَارَ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ ثُمَّ يَتَبِعُهَا So that they will know the narrations that are attributable to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and consequently follow, uh, follow them, follow those narrations, i.e. follow the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah. فَهُمْ يَتَّبِعُونَ آثَارَ الرَّسُولِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فِي الْعَقِيدَةِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ وَالْأَخْلَاقِ so they therefore follow the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in terms of creed, in terms in terms of worship, in terms of manners, and in terms of calling to Allah. يَدْعُونَ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِلَى شَرِيعَةِ اللَّهِ فِي كُلِّ مناسبة. They invite the slaves of Allah to the legislation of Allah in every occasion, in every possible occasion. وَكُلَّمَ اقْتَدَتِ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ دَعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ And every time wisdom necessitates that they call to Allah, they call to Allah. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ لَا يَخْبِطُونَ خَبْطَ عَشْوَاءٍ However, they are not doing so abruptly. They're not doing so spaghetti style. And this is um, um, uh, an example that I learned from my uh, ex-boss. May Allah preserve and protect him. Uh, my beloved uh, uh, Hatim al -Sa'i. Uh, When When speaking about work in the work environment, and I use this now when I train my, my team, my field force team from Samsung, we, we speak about a haphazard approach uh, random, chaotic approach versus organized. And since people love pasta, we try to connect this with pasta. So there's the lasagna approach and there's the spaghetti approach. The, the, the lasagna is organized. The lasagna has a layer of ground beef, 
or chicken or whatever, a layer of, of pasta, a layer of sauce, a layer of cream, the way it is, the way it is presented is, is such an organized fashion. Versus spaghetti. Spaghetti is just noodles that are all chaotically merged and mixed up where you don't know what begins where and when it ends. And even when you eat spaghetti, it's a very messy uh, meal. And you have to have really high quality etiquettes to be able to eat a, a, a plate uh, of spaghetti without feeding your shirt and you're the person next to you and the entire table. Especially if you're the type who like to, you know, suck the noodle at the end. So before, uh, what? Slurp. Yeah, slurp the noodle. I'm sorry. So while it's going in, it's going like, and it's spraying tomato sauce everywhere, right? So, the, the, so many people, their life, their approach to life is spaghetti and everything. So they want to explain something. They don't have the ability to organize their thoughts. They don't have the ability to, to structure their sentences. They just, they know they have an idea and they want to deliver it in, in whichever way suitable for them. And it's often so unorganized and so unharmonious that you really don't understand. You understand? So, and this is the case with many people involved in sales that don't have that, that skill. They don't have the skill to organize their thoughts and therefore their sentences so they can create imagery in the minds of the recipients. So when you explain a feature about a device, the people can imagine it even though they don't see the device and they don't see it. And some people just don't have the ability to do so. So your approach to life should be one of the lasagna because you will be organized. Everything is done in a manner which is consistent and structured. Don't be a spaghetti. Because if you're spaghetti, you're just going to be a trouble for yourself and trouble for the people around you. And people can only take so much spaghetti before they want pizza. So you know how it goes. المهم, they don't do this in, this in this spaghetti style. Where they give da'wah, but their da'wah is, is just not organized. It's not proper. It is not established on the right uh, uh, foundations. And Unfortunately, that would be uh, applicable to many of the du'at on the scene today. They, they, you see them all over the place discussing every subject and, and uh, thinking that they've mastered every field. And they're not. They're not. They, and I, when, you, when you go to a field that is not yours, you often create more issues than solutions. Okay, I don't want to mention any names now, but you understand what I'm saying. وَإِنَّمَا يَدْعُونَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ Rather, they invite people to Allah with wisdom. And they follow the narrations of the Prophet وسلم, الحميدة, and the noble character, the noble manners in dealing with people with gentleness and kindness. Dealing with people with kindness and lenience. They're, they're actually lenient to people. وتنزيل, وتنزيل and giving each person his due status, dealing with people depending on their actual position, something appropriate to them. They don't treat everybody the same. You have to have respect to those who are older than you. You have to, you know, uh, the people that are more senior than you in knowledge. There's etiquettes and ways of going about these things, you know. And they also follow him, Sallallahu in his manners with his family. This is where we fall short. You see them keen on being the best of people to their own family. Because the Prophet said, The best of you are the best of are, is the best of you are those who are best to their wives. Ahl meaning your, your family. In general, it could be wives, it could be family. And I am the best of you to my wives, alayhi salatu salam. وَنَحْنُ لَا نَسْتَطِيعَ أَنْ نَحْصِرَ آثَارَ الرَّسُولِ alayhi salatu salam. And we are unable to list and to enumerate all of the narrations of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. وَلَكِنْ نَقُولُ عَلَى سَبِيلِ الْإِجْمَالِ But we say, generally speaking, فِي الْعَقِيدَةِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ وَالْخُلُقِ وَالْدَعْوَةِ 
in 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 terms of creed and worship and manners and invitation to Allah في العبادة لا يتشددون ولا يتهاونون ويتبعون ما هو أفضل in worship for example they're neither extreme they're neither too stern nor are they too laxed they follow that which is best they follow that which is best وربما يشتغلون عن العبادة بمعاملة الخلق للمصلحة this is very important and perhaps they would preoccupy they would perhaps they would preoccupy themselves with providing what is beneficial for the creatures for the creation of Allah meaning dealing kindly uh, uh, with the creation of Allah over they preoccupy themselves with that over their own worship so some people they are dedicated to worship and some people the time which could be used for voluntary worship they rather they would rather use that time to benefit the creation of Allah to benefit the creation of Allah and of course fi kullin khair fi kullin khair in each there's good even though the scholars speak very highly of al naf al mutaaddi the benefit that extends over to the people being superior to the naf al qasir ala shakhs the the benefit that is restricted to the doer so when you worship Allah Azza wa Jal, you're definitely benefiting yourself. But when you do something that helps your fellow Muslims, then you're worshiping Allah and you're helping someone else. And that is given superiority and a, a, a distinction over the private worship. Okay, It's given some sort of an edge over the private worship. So that's very important to be mindful of. كما كان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يأتيه الوفود يشغلونه عن الصلاة فيقضيها فيما بعد just like when the delegations would come to the Prophet Sallam, he would be busy in accommodating them and dealing with them so much so that the salah would be delayed he would he would that he would he would not be able to even perform the salah he would make it up later عليه الصلاة والسلام showing that there are times where uh, you know helping people and and catering for people is given precedence over your own act of worship. Personally, I like to do this, uh, you know, when, when for example, um, I have guests over. Sometimes people invite guests over, and then after the salah in the masjid, they want to pray all the sunan. Uh, the sunnah is to pray the sunnah at home. Then, you have people waiting for you. It's more befitting that you cater for those guests than you pray in the sunnah in the masjid. Especially when you only left it in order to cater for your guests. It's not like you're lazy. So Allah will give you the reward of having prayed and will give you the reward of sacrificing for looking after your guests. Uh, this is the kind of broad thinking that comes as a result of having wisdom and understanding of the deen and knowing what to do, when, how, with who. You, you have to know the dynamics of human relationship and, and the rights of others. And when, when, when doing something for, uh, to help a Muslim is far greater than a than hundred rak'ats that you pray on your own. And a lot of people miss out on that. They don't, they don't weigh these things properly and they think that, you know, they, they don't assess those matters adequately. So just be mindful of that, barakallah fikum, in your daily lives. طيب. قوله ظاهرا وباطنا. As for the statement of Shaykh al-Sam Taymiyyah internally and externally, الظهور والبطون أمر نسبي. نسبي, عفوا. أمر نسبي. The external and internal matter is a relevant matter. ظاهراً فيما يظهر للناس. Where was I? A. ظاهراً meaning that which is which appears, which is visible to the people. وباطناً فيما يسرونه بأنفسهم. And what is internal is that which they keep as secrets with themselves. ظاهراً في الأعمال الظاهرة وباطناً في أعمال كروب. Or we could look at it differently. We could say ظاهراً externally as in in the acts of worship that are visible to the people. And batinan in the matters, meaning internally as in, in the worship of the heart. You understand? So it could be that it's something that you say or something that you keep to yourself. Or it could be that it's an act of worship that people physically see or the act of worship of the heart. Such as khawf of Allah wa khashyatullah and so on and so forth. فمثلا, the Shaykh is going to give you the example. التوكل والخوف والرجاء والإنابة والمحبة وما أشبه ذلك هذه من عمل القلوب. Let's look at them one after the other. So you have um, tawakkul. What is tawakkul? When you rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. 
خوف is fear of Allah رجاء is hope in Allah إنابة is returning to Allah remorsefulness basically محبة is love وما أشبه ذلك and others what is similar to that هذه من عمل القلوب all of these are examples of the acts of worship of the heart these are the actions of the heart يقومون بها على الوجه المطلوب they fulfill it in the prescribed manner والصلاة فيها القيام والقعود والركوع والسجود and Salah has the standing and the sitting and the bowing and the prostrating والصدقة والحج والصيام and you have صدقة charity and حج pilgrimage and صيام and fasting وهذه من أعمال الجوارح فهي ظاهرة and these are all from the deeds of the limbs and those are considered to be external or apparent صح؟ ثم أعلم أن آثار الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم تنقسم إلى ثلاثة أقسام أو أكثر Then know, may Allah have mercy on you, that the narrations of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are divided into three categories or even possibly more أولا, first, ما فعله على سبيل التعبد And this is going to be very important, so pay attention Especially those of you who ask me all the time about the salah. Jai al kalam, asbir and tuya. Hello. So first of all, that which you what that which he did alayhi salam as worship, that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi did as worship. فَهَذَا لَا شَكَّ أَنَّنَا مَأْمُرُونَ بِتِبَاعِ This there is no doubt that we are obliged and commanded to follow him alayhi salatu salam. Excuse me. لقوله تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة because Allah says in the Quran indeed in the Messenger of Allah you have the best example or have a good example to follow. سورة الأحزاب آية 21. فكل شيء لا يظهر فيه أنه فعله تأثرا بعادة أو بمقتدى جبلة وفطرة أو حصل اتفاقا فإنه على سبيل التعبد ونحن مأمورون به نحن مأمورون نحن مأمورون به so anything and everything which the Prophet ﷺ did that wasn't done out of custom or as part of the natural disposition or it was done accidentally, it just happened coincidentally, then we therefore understand that this was done as a form of worship and we are commanded to follow him والسلام, in those matters. Hello? So that's the first. ثانياً ما فعله اتفاقاً that which Prophet Sallallahu did uh, as in like incidentally or coincidentally, however you want to translate it. فَهَذَا لَا يُشْرَعُ لَنَا التَّأَسِّي فِيهِ huh? This, we are not legislated to follow him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that. Pay attention now. لِأَنَّهُ غَيْرُ مَقْصُودُ Why? Because it was unintended. كَمَا لَوْ قَالَ قَائِلِ If a person were to say, يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَكُونَ قُدُومُنَا إِلَى مَكَّةَ فِي الْحَجِّ فِي الْيَوْمِ الرَّابِعِ مِنْ ذِي الْحِجَّة the day on which we should go to Mecca for Hajj should be on the fourth day of Dhul Hijjah. لِأَنَّ الرَّسُولَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ قَدِمَ مَكَّةَ فِي الْيَوْمِ الرَّابِعِ مِذِ الْحِجَّةِ Because Prophet Sallallahu went to Mecca on the fourth day of Dhul Hijjah, on the fourth of Dhul Hijjah. And you know that Hajj doesn't begin until when? It doesn't begin until the eighth. The يَوْمُ التَّوْرِيَةِ التَّرْوِي عَفْوًا and then يوم عرفة and then يوم النحر then the أيام التشريق and those of you who haven't done حج I ask Allah عز وجل with His beautiful names and perfect attributes to grant you حج as soon as possible so you could fulfill this obligation of Islam and you know basically make sure that you've you've done your job in this life because unfortunately a humongous number of Muslims, they don't, I don't understand what's going on. Like dudes be saving money and buying homes and cars and, 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 you know, doing all types of stuff. And, and they don't do Hajj, even though as soon as you have the financial ability, as soon as you can financially uh, 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 afford coming to Saudi to do Hajj, you are obliged to do so that same year. Y'all be procrastinating and waiting. 
And I don't know this and I don't know that. Yeah, أخي, wallahi junoon. Wait until you're 40, 50 years old. Who told you you're going to live that long? Plus, you're sinful according to the scholar. Every year you could do hajj and you don't do hajj, you're sinful. As soon as you got the dinero and the means, as soon as you have the means, let's say the word means because the means is inclusive of travel and documentation and finance and the whole shebang. And being, you know, somebody looking after your family, blah, blah, blah. Once you got all those, y'all got to go for hajj, man. You can't be holding back, waiting for I don't know what. To get a royal invitation, yani? No, you have to strive. And hajj is a beautiful thing. Hajj is a cleansing experience. Hajj is a rejuvenating experience. Hajj is lessons that you learn about people, about yourself, about your discipline, about your patience. About who you're worshiping and what kind of impact, the, you know, the, the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jal is, is displayed on Hajj. When you see hundreds of thousands, millions of people literally going around doing the same acts of worship. Everybody begging Allah, everybody in the state of need and humiliation. Everybody feeling worthless. Everybody wearing the same towels. You're running around trying to make your hajj acceptable. You're at your lowest level from a human point of view, especially if you live a VIP lifestyle, especially if you have a luxurious lifestyle. You, you, get, you get demoted, downgraded. On, in Muzdalifa, maybe, maybe you sleep near a bathroom. They're better days, but you don't know. You have no control. Has no one has control? What we in the past we had a nice tent and everything. It, it, it rained. The rain destroyed the tent. It wasn't as comfortable anymore. So you have to be, you know, Hajj. Hajj will put you on your place. It's a beautiful thing. I uh, advise you to do Hajj. Ala kulli hal. So the Prophet ﷺ went there on the fourth of the Hijjah. He didn't tell us that this is a sunnah. Because hajj was only a few days later. This is not legislated. His arrival والسلام, in Mecca on that day was something that happened incidentally. It was an incident. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, 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 on purpose. It wasn't intended. There you go, Bismillah. Hmm. ولو قال قائل if a person were to say ينبغي إذا دفعنا من عرفة ووصلنا إلى الشعب الذي نزل فيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وبال أن ننزل ونبول ونتوضأ وضوءا خفيفا كما فعل النبي نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فنقول هذا لا يشرع and a person may also say that if we uh, if we move from عرفة and we reach the uh, the mountain, the area where the Prophet ﷺ passed, and then he and he ur urinated. Then we should also go down in the same place and urinate in the same place and make a light wudu like he did. Aisha we say no, none of this is legislated. It is not legislated. Similarly, we look and say about everything that happened incidentally. It is not legislated that we follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that regard. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do so as an in means of worshipping Allah. He didn't intend that. And following him is an act of worship. He didn't intend it so we don't do it either. Aha. Uh -huh. ثالثا ما فعله بمقتدى العادة that which the Prophet ﷺ did as a custom فهل يشرع لنا التأسي به is it legislated for us to follow him عيسى السلام to emulate him to copy him in those matters the Sheikh said الجواب نعم the answer is yes ينبغي لنا أن نتأسى به we should it is incumbent on us it is encouraged. We are encouraged to emulate the Prophet وسلم, in those matters. But which, how, in, in the kind and not the type. In the kind and not the type. 
and kind is more generic and more general than type. And the, when the Sheikh will give the example, you will understand. So pay attention so you will, it, will, it will click. وَهَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ قَلَّ مَنْ يَتَفَطَّنُ لَهَا مِنَ النَّاسِ أو قَلَّ أي نعم قَلَّ here is, is uh, uh, little. This matter, very small number of people are mindful of it or pay attention to it. يظنون أن التأسي به فيما هو على سبيل العادة بالنوع ثم ينفون التأسي به في ذلك. So they they uh, they think that emulating the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the matters that were custom or customary is regarding the type, and then they turn around and they deny uh, that they're emulating him alayhi sallam in the first place. Okay. ونحن نقول نتأسى به لكن باعتبار الجنس. So we say we follow him, but regarding the the kind or the category بمعنى ان نفعل ما تقتضيه العاده التي كان عليها الناس الا ان يمنع من ذلك مانع شرعي meaning we do whatever was customary that the people did unless we have a legislative evidence which prevents us from doing so so this is regarding the matter of what is customary رابعا ما فعله بمقتدى الجبلة uh -huh. that was the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did as part of the natural disposition فهذا ليس من العبادات قطعا this is not part of worship absolutely لكن قد يكون عبادة من وجه but it could be a, considered a form of worship from one perspective بأن يكون فعله على صفة معينة عبادة the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did it in a particular manner as an act of worship كالنوم such as sleeping فإنه بمقتدى الجبلة. Sleeping is a, is a natural disposition that humans have. Everybody sleeps. Um, you know, and some people who don't sleep suffer. لكن يسن أن يكون على اليمين. So even though sleeping is a, is a natural disposition based, it's a, a naturally dispositioned act of, uh, of, of living, it could become a sunnah and a ibadah when you sleep on your right side. Same thing can apply to awal aklu wa shurb, eating and drinking. Jibilla wa tabi'a, this is also natural disposition and natural. Walakin qad yakunu ibadah min jaukhra, but it becomes an act of worship from another perspective. Ida qasada bihi al insanu imtithala amri lahi wa tana'um bin ami. If the person intends fulfilling the command of Allah and enjoying the bounties Allah gave him. Walquwa ala ibadati wa hafdul badan, and he's using it as a means of strengthening his worship and to preserve his body. ثم إن صفته أيضا تكون عبادة. Also the 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 description of that act of that uh, that natural disposition. When you dig deeper, basically, it could become an act of worship. For example, when it comes to eating, why eating with the right hand? Well, بسملا عند البداء. And then also uh, saying بسم الله when you initiate eating. والحمد لله عند الانتهاء. Saying الحمد لله when you have concluded eating. When you're done with eating. So all of these are يعتبر uh, عادة. Uh, this is a عادة, but it becomes a عبادة for the people that are intentionally making it an objective to do it as an عبادة. So if they've shifted this uh, عادات to عبادة, they shifted the traditional, customary, habitual, uh, uh, you know, behavior. They've converted that. Into an act of worship because of the intention that they have within themselves. Here comes another critical meta. Growing your hair, growing your hair, is it an is it a custom or an act of worship? The Sheikh says, "Yara ulama'i annahu ibada." Some of the scholars see that it's an act of worship. See it as an act of worship. يسن للإنسان اتخاذ الشعر and that it is a sunnah for the person to grow his hair ويرى آخرون أن هذا من الأمور العادية and other scholars see it as something that is simply customary بدليل قول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم as per the evidence that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has الذي للذي رآه قد حلق بعد رأسه وترك بعضه the Prophet ﷺ had seen a man, the Prophet ﷺ had seen a man who had shaved part of his head and kept the other. He had shaved basically marine, the marine cut, the marine hairstyle. 
he had shaved part of his head and he kept the other. And the Prophet ﷺ forbade them from that. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Either shave it all or keep it all. Either shave it all or keep it all. And that is what I have adopted ever since I learned this book with our sheikh. And, and I was that was my hairstyle in the first place before I even practiced Islam. That's just me. That's where I find my comfort zone. That's where I'm comfortable. And a lot of people think that, you know, shaving the head is the trait of the khawarij, which it could be, even though now most of the khawarij, by the way, grow their hair. Just if you want an update on the 15th century, I don't know what century we're in right now, from the Hijri one, that, that now you find any Khariji, they all have long hair. So the fact that some of the Khawarij may have that trait does not mean, and the scholars have a long fatwa on this, does not mean that if you shave your head now you become a Khariji. You can have many traits that the Khawarij have and doesn't make you of the Khawarij. Nor should you emulate them. But I use this hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told this man, either leave your entire hair or shave your entire hair. He gave him the option to shave the whole thing. So if, if a person is comfortable with having uh, growing their hair, more power to you. Enjoy yourself and enjoy all the grooming and all the wasted shampoo and all the wasted conditioner and all the showering that takes twice or three times as long as, as uh, somebody else's and going to the barber and wasting your money. Enjoy, enjoy. I, on the other hand, personally, I don't have to worry about any of this. I don't have to comb my hair in the morning and I don't have to uh, use any shampoo and none of that stuff. I just have to, you know, uh, shave, which is still uh, quite a task. But the feeling I get afterwards is satisfied. So this, inshallah, will make a clip so that anytime somebody asks me again about my hairstyle, we can tell them, Tafaddal ya Mawlana Sheikh. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which the scholars have understood as it, that the matter of growing your hair is merely a customary one and that you're not obliged to do it as part of the sunnah. No, I'm not going against the Prophet ﷺ by shaving my head. Okay? Kapish, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And this is an evidence that growing your hair is not an act of worship. Otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ would have said to him, uh, he would have said to him, leave your hair and don't shave any of it. Leave it, don't shave any of it. Nope. He said either leave it all, or he said either shave it all or leave it all, giving you the option to shave it. This matter, you need to be a little, you know, firm about it. I need some, you know, some verification or investigation. You cannot say that this thing is an act of worship except with an evidence. Because the fundamental principle regarding acts of worship is prohibition. You're not allowed to add an act of worship into Islam. You cannot come up with something of your own and innovate it. You have to have an evidence that substantiates and it, it supports your act of worship. Except that which the evidence has established its validity and its legislation within Islam. Hello. Ooh, we're approaching the critical, critical time. Um, yeah, we should we should stop because this is like almost like a new, it's a new topic altogether. Uh, regarding the uh, following the way of the Salaf, which which is something that is absolutely lovely, and I know y'all get excited with the Q and A, so I will be Mr. Nice Guy. Um, after I've established the validity of my hairstyle, I think we can move on to the next one. How how far did I scroll down? What did what did I do? What happened? Okay, whatever. Right here. Okay, whatever. Thank you. Bye. Stop sharing. Yeah. Oh. Yalla, hujjaj.
الحمد لله In the West, it is nearly impossible to find a job without free mixing. Am I sinful for working in the mixed office as man? I need to earn a living. What shirt company you wearing yesterday, Ustad? I okay. I replied to you. Okay, first of all, um, you need to. You definitely. You have a number of options. Number one is if, if, if the West is so. If first of all, try to move out of the West to a country where you could work in a place that is not mixed. Level one. Level two. You're not able to do so. Or you could say, well, anywhere I go now, it's it's more or less mixed. Say, okay, no problem. I got you. I understand. Then try to find a job where there's no mixing because there are jobs like that. Can't do that. Level three. Level three. Uh, try to find a job where the mixing is minimal. Level four. You can't get that. You couldn't. You searched. You spent time. You're broke. You, you need money. You find a job. Where even if there's mixing, you're definitely keeping to yourself and you're feeding Allah on that job. And while you're there, you keep looking for a better job where this is not the situation. As for yesterday's shirt, it was Fred Perry. It was Fred Perry shirt. Probably fake one. Just so we can be clear. Because I would not spend so much money. I got it as a gift. I got it as a gift and I'm, I'm guessing it's fake. Could be real, but whatever the case may be, it's it's I wouldn't spend that much money on brands. So I, I have limits in terms of what I spend. When I buy things, I buy them on sale, and I wouldn't pay so much money for uh, any particular brand just because the brand is that expensive. They can go and throw themselves in the ocean. Now, someone in the chat is insulting Shaykh Taymiyyah and brings Shubuhat and claims to the Sufis. Well, who who what do we want? We'll block him, inshallah. We don't have time for funny people. Sometimes people, instead of saying, I swear by my mother's life, they say on mom's or on my mother's life. Is it considered swearing by other than Allah? Of course it's considered swearing by other than Allah. And it's haram. It is haram. Man halafa bi ghayri faqad kafar aw ashrak. Aw kama qala sallam. Whoever swears by other than Allah, he has committed shirk or disbelief. You cannot swear by anyone but Allah. No one, no soul is, is, is as important as Allah Azza wa Jal for you to swear by it. You're not allowed to swear by anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if I made an oath to listen to music, to not to listen, if I made an oath to not listen to music, then broke the oath and also made a different oath in the past, then he's expiation. When, ex when expiating for these oaths, must I have to have which oath I'm expiating for my intention? Yes, you should. Or can I just take my intention? No, you cannot. You have to have one for each oath that you broke. Now, Can I watch a video where someone says G's or G but doesn't say Jesus? I mean, do you, 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 you I, I don't know. Do you know in advance that they're going to say G and G's? I mean, it is a short for Jesus and it is a problem. Um, I don't know what type of video and why you need to watch it in the first place. I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I'm sorry. Can we read books that have images such, such as of women? Uh, well, it depends on why you read reading these books. If these books are just being read for entertainment, uh, then no. If these books, uh, or if you see a woman, you lower your gaze. If you see a woman, you don't you don't check her out. Sometimes you know. Let's keep it real. On on Facebook, on on uh, Instagram, there's the women are popping up all the time. Okay, women are popping up all the time. It's unavoidable. When you see the woman, you lower your gaze. Or I, you know, if I'm watching a video, a woman come, I go to the next video. You go to the next video. Um, if obviously you're going to see something that's going to, to uh, excite you. So, you know, you need to weigh that out, weigh, weigh those things. Okay. Science history that's studying, you're studying, you see an image of a woman. Yeah. You can still read the book. Just don't check out the women. Salam alaikum. Habib alaikum salam. Ahsan Allah alaikum alaikum. What's the ruling on reciting not as melodious while being an imam because you don't want Riyya creeping in? Well, that you follow, you're, you're going against the Prophet ﷺ. You're going against the Prophet ﷺ and you're going against the Sahaba. Who was it? Ibn Mas'ud? Was it Ibn Mas'ud? Or was it uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari? Who told Prophet ﷺ, if I knew that you were there, I would have يعني, I would have even made it better for you. No, it's a sunnah for you to, to beautify your voice as an imam. 
and uh, you know fight off the Syria, fight off the Syria, and do it for the sake of Allah. Now, how to protect babies, infants from being afflicted with evil eye? Is making dua enough? Also, how to deal with little kids tickling feet in salah and masjid and running away? <laughs> Type, uh, how to protect babies by yes, by making a lot of dua for them and don't put them out there for the people to see. Yani, if, if you're going to share their videos and stuff like that, do it among family or well wishers. Don't put it out to the public because uh, many people are, 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 are full of envy and, and hatred. Um, and yes, make the dua. You recite Surah Al-Fatiha, Al-Ikhlas. You do, you do ruqya on these kids as often as you can. How to deal with little kids tickling feet in salah and then running away? You, you just enjoy it. You just enjoy it and then later on tell them, hey, stop doing that. Uh, May Allah ease your affairs. I mean, says, is the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro much better, hugely, than the Samsung Buds 2? What is hugely, like Ya Muhammad? Um, you can't use much better, hugely. It's just too, too many uh, adverbs or adjectives, was it? Anyways, long story short, um, is it much better? Yes, it is much better because it will be, and it is the only, the only wireless Bluetooth. Uh, earbuds that will offer 24-bit hi-fi sound quality that is only found on wired headphones or earphones. So wired earphones give you 24-bit hi-fi. Uh, wireless give you 16-bit hi-fi. Uh, those those uh, Buds 2 Pro will be the first one that will give you the same quality as wired earphones, but wireless. Along with the VPU voice pickup unit and active noise cancellation and the whole shebang. It's just, uh, it's, yes, I would say they're much, much better. And longer battery life, inshallah. Faster charging also. Now, if I do the mubah tawassul by asking Allah, by asking something from Allah by my good deeds, then does this cancel the reward of the good deed in the akhir? No, of course it does not. No, it does not. No problem. No problem. Whatever is gems. Salam alaikum, Ustad. Wa alaikum salam. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you give nasiha to some Muslims doing weird things about Queen, like making dua Umrah, like in her lineage, like linking her lineage to Prophet, singing songs at mosque? <laughs> yeah, akhi uqsum billah al azim. Those UK Muslims specifically and the Muslims in the West at large are, I, I, mean, I don't understand what's going on. What do they eat before they sleep or what do they have for breakfast or what is it? What, where? I've seen some outlandish, absolutely, absolutely astonishing, outlandish nonsense regarding the queen. From people making sujood in front of her, I don't know, whatever, the, 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 the tomb to um, people doing hajj and umrah on her behalf. To people making dua for her, to people claiming she's from the family of the Prophet. ﷺ. Like you said, I was like, yo, <laughs> what's going on? Yani, y'all already UK citizens. Like, I understand if you were like a, a an immigrant in the UK and you know you thought that the immigration office, when they see you, you know, saying hey to the queen, they're gonna be like, Oh, yeah, well, let's give this guy the citizenship. Look at this loyal uh, loyalty shown to the United Kingdom. But y'all already UK residents, man. Y'all got the citizenship already. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you trying to do? I mean, neither one is justified. It's just a way more ludicrous, the fact that you're doing this. Uh, and, and I mean, yo, people be crazy, man. People be crazy. Stop. Stop. She was a kafira. And she returned to Allah. And Allah will deal with her. And this is... Anyways, I don't want to go into conspiracy theories. Long story short, khalas, let her be. And you mind your business. You go, you mind your business and, and get off your mind and get off your tongue and do you. Worry about yourself. Ishada. Yalla. Yalla. Need to go to the gym. A Shia friend of mine offered me some clothes. He has a perfume shop. And there he also sells hair for women, which is wrong. Shia friend of mine offered me some clothes. Okay. Next, I don't know how he bought the clothes. If I, if it was the money with the other products, or yeah. Bottom line is it it's allowed for you to take those clothes and it's allowed for you to uh, keep them. 
It's allowed for you because the, the, the Jews used to give the Prophet ﷺ gifts and he would accept them and Allah called them, he described in the Quran, يَأْكُلُونَ السُّحْتِ they, they were like, they would eat usury and, and riba and they were like among the most wicked people. And yet Prophet ﷺ would still accept the hadiyah or the gift from people. So knock yourself out and enjoy it. Now, how can we make our friendships for the sake of Allah? By reminding, by doing al mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'dhum awliya ba'd. Allah says the believing men and the believing women are allies to one another. Ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna anil munkar. They enjoy what is good, forbid what is evil. Il akhiri. So you know, you you enjoy the good, forbid the evil. You remind each other of uh, of Allah. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر and they remind one another regarding the truth and to be patient. That's how you turn a friendship for the sake of Allah. Now, next. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. What do you think about Uthman bin Farooq and Karim Abu Zaid platforming Daniel Hakika Chu? Also, what are your thoughts on the back and forth between Sajid and Ali Da'wah? Wallahi, ya akhi al-aziz, regarding uh, uh, the, the former, I'm definitely devastated and disappointed. And I shared those sentiments with uh, Sheikh Karim, as I know him and I, I'm in touch with him. I, and I got to speak to him uh, further after the flyer was made that had my face and my name that I didn't even know about. You know, I found myself on a flyer and a, and a, a conference in Colorado. And I was like, somebody sent to me, he's like, brother, are you coming? I'm like, coming? What? What? What is this? I did not even know. So any zakhlaqir, the sheikh reached out and said there was a blunder. And he, you know, he respectfully apologized. And of course, I had to accept the apology. And I told him, one of my concerns is that Daniel should not be on, on, on this platform, period. Um, so that's my input. It's, it's, it's a misjudgment. It's a wrong, definitely wrong. Do you cancel them out? No. Mistakes happen. We hope that rectif rectification will come about. Um, as for Sajid and Ali Dawa, man, I mean, I, Ali Dawa, the, the level of disappointment that I have towards his brother is, is, is heartbreaking. It's is is melting. It melts the hearts. I I could I cannot believe sometimes the tweets that I read. I cannot believe uh, the the mistakes. I cannot believe the the uh, the audacity. Uh, and Sajid, I know Sajid, and we talk all the time. Sajid is one of the softest, kindest, uh, sweethearts you will find. He's such a sweet brother, and very. I mean, he's the last person. Uh, that would behave or, or operate in the way he was being described. And I just don't understand what's going on with Ali, man. I don't know who's pumping him and who's, who's, who's feeding him junk in his head. He doesn't have the, the, the ability to think on his own. I feel like he's a reaction. I feel as though he's, he just reacts to what people tell him. It's as though he's not, because he also comes off as being a nice brother. So there's this, this conflict in his behavior. I don't understand. But in short, in short, um, definitely uh, Sajid is oppressed in those allegations and accusations and uh, and Ali Da'wa honestly brother may Allah bless you Wallahi you need the Da'wa you need Da'wa more than anyone Anyone, I, I can't think of the, the most the most primitive the most uh, the first level grade uh, kindergarten student of knowledge says that Allah enters into his creation that I need I'm sorry. There's no, there's no, there's no slip of tongue there. These things, there's no slip of tongue associated with them. It's an, it's a clear indication about where the level of knowledge that you have. And you, you're out there talking about other du'at. Please, ya Sheikh. Allah yahdik, ya Sheikh. I wish you the best, Allah. Yalla, mashi halak. Next. It's easy and cheap for foreign students to study medicine at King Abdulaziz University, Taiwan University, or other. What? Do I look like I work in a university like your captain? Wallah, I don't know, Habibi, if it's easy or cheap. Wallah, I don't know. Yalla. If I am a police officer and I caught someone speeding, but the person is poor, so I let go of him for mercy. Is this permissible? I don't know. It would, if, would the people in charge want you to let him go? If they give you that privilege, then yes. If they give you that privilege, then yes. But if you're betraying the the the, the system, then no. Next. Yellow, we're running out of time. Would you say horse riding 
uh, is masculine? Absolutely. Absolutely, horse riding is masculine. Absolutely. Next. A person attends some Islamic class, but after some days he was feeling tired and bored when he attends the class. Tell advice to that person. You know, I mean, advice? Man up. Did you think that uh, attending class is going to be a, a walk in the park or a picnic? Of course, it's going to take determination, resolve, uh, sincerity, perseverance, patience. And you need to activate all of those. You need to switch on all of those for you to be able to hang in there. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy and don't give up. Don't expect it to be easy. See, a lot of times people have the wrong expectation. It's all about expectations. When you have an expectation that everything is going to be super easy and cool, and then it turns out to be complicated and difficult, then you feel turned off and you don't, you know, you lose, you lose your 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 motivation. It's because you have set the wrong expect expectation in the beginning. You should know that seeking knowledge is 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 tiring. Seeking knowledge is exhausting. Seeking knowledge is is draining, and you need to enter it with that expectation and that line of thinking for you to be able to move on. Am I allowed to get an education? Yani, imagine if I told you no. I'm Hanet. If I told you no, you're not allowed. Khalas, yani. The people around are going to say, yeah, Sheikh, yalla, go to university. Nope. I asked Abu Musab after the Aqidah class, can I get an education? He said, no. Allah, I won't. I will never learn again. I will never read a letter. I would have, hey, what do you mean? Why are you asking me if you can get an education or not? Why can't you get an education? Get two educations, ya akhi. Get three. Buy two, get one free. Authentic tafsir on YouTube. One word of paradise. Weekly tafsir class on Fridays. If my job bought us food to celebrate the birthday of one of the employees, can I eat out of it? Some of the scholars say yes. Some of the scholars say no. Can I learn Arabic before learning other things so that I can learn everything in Arabic afterwards? Yes, if you can do so, that would be wonderful. Wonderful if you're able to do so. Try. Do I know Nasser al Hambali? Uh, yes, he, he emailed me once and we corresponded via email a couple of times and that's as much as I know him. It was just via email communication. I don't know him beyond that. But I have been in touch with him via email because of that one video where I was made to appear as though I am, uh, you know, speaking about uh, Rabi' al-Madkhali, Sheikh Rabi' al-Madkhali. It's a long story, but anyways. Okay, that's it. We're done. Um, and no, for, for what's her name? For a man's home school, uh, the women should avoid horseback riding for a number of reasons that I would not like to elaborate on here. Um, and no, so horseback riding should is, 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 is for men and it is not for women unless there's a need and necessity. And nowadays there isn't any necessity. It's just a luxury. It's a, People do it for leisure. But let's say there was war and we're back in the days or we're in a future where there's no more. There's the only thing that left is horses and that would become means of transportation for the women. Then they could get back on these horses again. Until now, keep the horses for the men and let the women stay off them horses. Shukran, Jazeelan, wa ahlan, wa sahlan, wa marhaban, wa goodbye at 10.